All right, so we've had a look at propositions, and we, uh, atomic propositions, and we've uh, figured out how to get every possible combination of atomic propositions on a truth table. Now that we've covered atomic propositions, let's move on to our first kind of complex proposition, negations. So the first thing to keep in mind is that a negation is not just merely one more kind of atomic proposition. Superficially, it kind of seems like it, but it's not. Right. So a negation, uh, negation is a complex proposition, right. and it uh, says either that you, you know a, a atomic proposition is false, or some of the other complex propositions are false. Right. Because you can negate an atomic proposition and you can negate other kinds of complex propositions. You can even negate the negation, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So uh, suppose we have this proposition, right? So we have um, that sculpture, right? That sculpture is not blue. So you might think uh, not blue is a predicate, and that sculpture is the subject. Well, well no, not blue is, is not a predicate. Uh, blue is a predicate, but not blue is, is not a, a predicate. <laughs> because, you know, telling us that it's not something is not telling us what it is. And a predicate's job is supposed to tell us what something is. So that sculpture is not blue. Not blue is not the predicate. That sculpture is, um, you know, I'm actually a little colorblind, so I'm going to guess that's red. That sculpture is red, right? That, that tells us what it is, right? That actually gives us a predicate. Not blue is not a predicate. So when we're dealing with negations of an atomic proposition, it's important to be able to spot the atomic proposition that's embedded within the negation. Because the negation is a complex proposition, it takes at least an atomic and does something else with it. And it tells us that the atomic proposition is false. So in this case, I have, you know, when I, when I say that, that sculpture is not blue, the atomic proposition that's embedded in there is that that sculpture is blue. Well, that proposition is false. Right? That sculpture is blue. That proposition is false. So what a negation does is it tells us that <laughs> proposition is false. And this is probably a good time to mention the truth conditions for a negation. Okay? That sculpture is not blue. That's a negation. And it's true. Right? The negation itself, that whole thing, that sculpture is not blue. That whole negation is true because the atomic proposition within it, that sculpture is blue, is false. So negations are true just in case the proposition negated is false. The negations are true just in case the proposition negated is false. And it's true otherwise. I'm oh, sorry, it's false otherwise. False otherwise. So uh, that sculpture is not blue. That, again, the atomic proposition is that sculpture is blue and it's negated to say not blue. Equivalent negations are it is false that that sculpture is blue. It is not the case that that sculpture is blue. Uh, that sculpture is not blue. Um, those are probably the main, <laughs> the main kinds right there, right? Those are all equivalent. All three of those are negations. So you have to be careful. You have to you know, spot that negation in there. Right? Let's try another negation. Okay? That sculpture is not red. Well, that negation is false. Okay? The atomic proposition embedded within there right, is that sculpture is red. So when we negate that, yeah, that, 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 that's right, that atomic proposition, that atomic proposition, that sculpture is red, is true. And if we negate it, we say that, propos that sculpture is not red, that negation is false. So this is what's happening when we negate an atomic proposition. It's a complex proposition. That means that it's composed of something more than just, you know, an atomic. <laughs> um, 
There are other complex propositions. We got conjunctions, right? Uh, that sculpture is uh, red and the plants are green. Right? That's, a, that's a conjunction, and can we, we can negate that. Right? A conjunction says both the propositions are true. So well, actually, let's try a different one. Uh, that sculpture is red and the plants are pink. Well, that whole conjunction is false. So if we negate it, say it is false that that sculpture is red and the plants are pink, boom, now we have a true negation. Uh, we got conjunctions, we got disjunctions. Right? Disjunction says at least one of these is true. Conjunction says both of them are true. Disjunction says at least one of these is true. So either that sculpture is red or the plants are pink. Right? That's a true disjunction. If I say something like this, uh, either that sculpture is blue or those plants are pink, that whole disjunction is false because both of them are false, right? That whole disjunction is false. So that if we negate that whole thing, it is false that that sculpture is blue uh, and the plants are pink. Okay, now I have a true disjunction. Here, right? And the other kind of complex proposition we look at is conditional. So it's, you know, conditional says, if the first one's true, then the second one must be true, right? So if that sculpture is red, then that sculpture is a warm color, right? That's a true conditional. If the sculpture is red, then that sculpture is a warm color. Uh, if, uh, uh, if a false conditional would be something like this. If that sculpture is red, then that sculpture is a cool color, right? Well, that condition was false because red things are not cool things at least as far as the color is concerned. So if I say, if it is false that that sculpture is red, then the sculpture is a cool color. Now I have a true negation. So I just want to briefly introduce that. We don't, don't worry about all those other kinds of negations right now. <laughs> We're only going to worry about negations of atomic propositions. Right? So atomic proposition, that sculpture is blue. We negate, that's, that the atomic proposition is false. If we negate it, say it is false that that sculpture is blue, it is not the case that that sculpture is blue. That sculpture is not blue. Those are true negations. Those are all true and equivalent negations. And all a negation says is that the proposition negated is false. That's what's going on. So if the proposition negated is false, then the negation is true. If the proposition negated is true, then the whole negation is false. Okay. That's negations. Now let's take a look at symbolizing the negations and putting them under truth table. Well, apparently it's uh, foggy season here in the water room. <laughs> I did not anticipate this. <laughs> All right, let, let's deal with truth conditions, or truth tables, and, and, and negations. Okay, so suppose at this point you've already found your atomic propositions and your argument. And following all the rules up to this point, you've assigned your truth conditions for your propositions. Right. So let, let's just stick with something simple. Suppose we just have P. Well, now we're going to start looking at whether or under what conditions a negation is true or false with just P. So we followed all the rules. We've got our truth table. We got the rows. And we've distributed P across all the, you know, uh, across all possibilities, you know, both of them. <laughs> and now we want to figure out whether negation or, you know, figure out under what conditions not P is true. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's introduce a new rule. And so this is rule six. What you're going to do is, uh, you know, you have your truth assignments for P, but then across the top of our truth table, we now have the symbol for negation, which is the minus sign. Right, we got that minus sign, and then the atomic proposition. And each gets its own column, right? P gets its own column, and the negation gets its own column. And we're looking at the truth values for negation. So we take the truth values for P that we assigned following the rules up to this point, and rule six says assign those same truth values to every instance of P. Now in this little truth table, we just got one, right? So this isn't very hard. But you can have truth tables where you have multiple instances of that of atomic proposition. 
And what you do is you, you know, you copy and paste. You got the truth assignments for the atomic proposition. You copy and paste in every instance in the truth table. All right, so that's rule six. Okay, remember our truth conditions for negation. A negation is true just in case the proposition negated is false. And it's false otherwise. So, uh, well, look at row one. Right. Row one, P is true. All right. Well, since in row one, P is true, that means that the negation is false at row one. At row two, P is false. And since P is false, that means the negation of P is true at row two. So next rule, we got rule seven, enclose in parentheses right. the, tr the, the, uh, uh, as the truth value for that premise for that complex proposition. So this one is a negation, so it's easy. We just you know find the column for the negation, we put our truth values in there for that. Right? And then we enclose them with parentheses. We do the same thing with premises and conclusions when we get to that with the truth, with the uh, uh, with actual arguments. Okay. Well, that gives us, uh, that tells us, you know, uh, what the truth value of negation of P is in the various ways that P is assigned true or false. All right. Well, let's suppose we got something a little different. Suppose we have P and Q, and both P and Q are false. So we follow our rules up to this point. We had since we have two variables, since we got two atomic propositions, we've got four rows. And following the truth assignments, right? The first two rows for P are true. The second two rows for P are false. Rows one and three are true for Q. Rows th uh, two and four are false for Q. So following the rules up to this point, now we're going to fill in not P and not Q in our truth table. So we got not P. And, and then we got not Q. All right. Now let's put. Now let's use rule six. We'll take rule six, and we put uh, the truth assignments they had for P. We copy and paste them under P. We got the truth assignments for Q. We copy and paste them under Q, and we put them in the truth table. Well, since we got two rows for true for P, rows one and two for the negation of P are now false. Since uh, P is false in rows 3 and 4, the negation of P is true in rows 3 and 4. And we put those in parentheses. Moving over to Q, right, we got true, false, true, false. Well, that means rows 1 and 3, since those are assigned true for Q, well, that means the negation of Q is false. Rows 3 and 4 are assigned false, so that means the negation of Q is true in rows 3 and 4. So we put all that parentheses following rule seven. Now, if you get more complex from here, we can have three variables. We can have four variables. You've seen that. That'd be eight rows and 16 rows and 32 rows and 64 rows. But you follow these rules to fill out these truth tables in exactly the same way. All right, that's the negation of, uh, that's negations and truth tables. Let's keep moving on. So we've looked at negations as a complex proposition. You can't have a negation as an atomic proposition since something like not blue is not a predicate. And it's not a predicate because it doesn't tell us what it is. You know, predicates describe. This just says what it isn't. But saying what something isn't doesn't tell us what it is. All right. So uh, negations, at, at, when they apply to atomic propositions, they say some atomic proposition is false. We'll look at the uh, negations of other complex propositions later on. Now, one of the things that I mentioned, right, you can negate an atomic proposition, you can negate conjunctions, disjunctions, and conditionals, you can also negate a negation. In fact, because of the way our, our system is going to work, right, you can add negations on, right? There's no limit to the number of negations you can add on to a proposition, you know, if it's, if it's true. So uh, what would this look like? Right. What would this look like? The negation of the negation of P. All right. Well, let, let's look at our truth table. So we, you know, we have P. It's got row one is true and row two is false. 
It's a complex truth table. Uh, and, th and then across the top, we have the negation of the negation of P. So we, following rule six, we take our truth values for P and we paste them under P in our truth vet. We copy them and then we paste them in our truth table. And then we look at the negation of P. Well, in the negation of P, since P is true, the negation of P is false. At row one and at row two, P is false. And so the negation of P in that row is true. Okay. Now we don't put parentheses around, with, uh, rule seven doesn't apply here because this proposition is the negation of the negation of P. The parentheses go at the other negation. That's the negation of the negation of P. If we put the parentheses just there in that one column, well, that would just be the negation of P. All right, well, let's go to the negation of the negation of P. <laughs> All right, so at row one, the negation of P is false. Since at row one, the negation of P is false, the negation of the negation of P is true. And we put our T in there, and that's where we enclose it with the parentheses following rule seven. Row two, the negation of P is true. Since the negation of P is true, at row two, the negation of the negation of P is false. All right. Well, uh, you're looking at this, and you might think, hey, well, you just showed me something I pretty much figured out on my own, that the negation of the negation of P is the same as P, right? The truth base is the same, and that's true, right? It, now, what we just proven is what's called an equivalence rule. An equivalence rule will let us swap out, right, these instances within a formula. So if I have some really long formula, and right in the middle of it somewhere, I've got the negation of the negation of P, well, I could swap that out for P. Or suppose somewhere in a really long formula, uh, I've got P. I can swap that out for the negation of the negation of P. Now, that might seem a little strange at first. Trust me, it comes in handy. <laughs> they wouldn't have figured out this equivalence rule if it didn't come in handy. But that's what an equivalence rule does. It lets us swap out equivalent formula within a complex formula, where you don't have to prove anything else to do that. And what justifies this is our truth table. Our truth table shows us that these two formula are equivalent in all truth assignments. If we had uh, uh, any conjunction, it would be equivalent to the negation of the negation of that conjunction. If we had a disjunction, it would be equivalent to the equivalent, it would be equivalent to the negation of the negation of the disjunction, right? We could swap out a conjunction with a double negated conjunction. We can swap out a disjunction with a double negated disjunction. We can swap out a double negated disjunction with a disjunction. We can swap out a double negated conjunction with a conjunction, right? Same thing with conditional. Right? It doesn't matter what kind of proposition is negated or what kind of proposition you have, you can swap that out with this double negation. Or if you have some proposition that's double negated, you can swap that out with that proposition. All right, so we have have, up to this point, what do we have? We've had our rules for defining. Excuse me, we've had our kinds of definitions. We've had our rules for defining. We've looked at uh, atomic propositions. And we looked at our first complex proposition, negations. And we even got our first equivalence rule, double negation. Believe it or not, we still haven't hit arguments. <laughs> Right. We'll start taking a look at taking a hard look at arguments in the next uh, next chapter, the next videos, when we look at conditionals.